Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is HD StarCraft and I'm back for game three between EG Jadong and of course MYI Stardust here in the DreamHack Summer Grand Finals. This is this is a best of five series by the way guys and I'm not casting the tournament in any particular order so I will be casting more games from DreamHack Summer, uh, whatever games I feel like are best but so far this series, this Grand Finals has been pretty electrifying. We've seen a lot of aggression uh, and I'm hoping here we're going to see a macro game at some point these maps have been in uh, are big maps you know we've had Aklon Waste and now we've had Star Station uh, and we've had Whirlwind in the first game so hopefully at some point here we're gonna see these two players you know playing a straight-up long-term game but then again the thing is I haven't seen Stardust play a macro game yet he's been very uh, very much uh, a, a Protoss player who um, will try to end the game early on. I, I don't think I've ever seen him go for a Colossus even, which is like mind-boggling. A Protoss that doesn't go for Colossus? What's going on here? Right? So um, it it's it's been kind of a weird uh, scene here with Stardust. And I'm sure a lot of people out there are rooting for Stardust to go down and not win. But the, the thing here is when you're in a tournament setting, if you've got money on the line here, I think it's almost $10,000 for first place. It's like, you know, you're going to do whatever it takes to win this tournament. So uh, Stardust is doing whatever it takes here to win. And he knows he needs whatever it takes to beat a player like Jadong. And Jadong himself even doing whatever it takes. I mean, the last game, uh, Jadong just said, hey, I'm going to fake out the hatchery, cancels it, goes for roaches, and just straight up wins. Uh, and there was nothing that Stardust could have done about that. And, and I think that's the vulnerability in, in the build order for Stardust, is he goes for the super quick uh, robo robotics facility on two bases. And, you know, it, it that build for Protoss leaves you very vulnerable to a roach all in. That's... You know, that's what I'm trying to uh, trying to um, explain here, and it, it's something that Jadon was able to sniff out, and he was able to take advantage of that. So we'll see what happens on the uh, third game of this set. It looks like he's going to go for a very quick third hatchery, um, he, and he's going to try to play a macro one here against uh, Stardust. I think he's thinking, well, we both had our fun to start the set off. We both had our you know our moments in the light. Now let's sit back and let's see who really has the skills to win in a long-term match of StarCraft. And we'll see if Stardust has uh, got the same mentality here. He is going to be going for a front door wall off here, of course. Gateway and Photon Cannon on the way. Now, uh, what is going to be interesting to see is, does he throw down a few more gateways? Or does he go for a quick Robo Bay again? Um, and, you know, going for the quick Robo Bay isn't like a bad build or anything. A lot of Protoss do that. Um, but it does leave you vulnerable to those roaches. And we'll see if Stardust, you know tailors his build a little bit here and figures out a way to make sure that he doesn't die to the same straight up you know roach attack um, although I don't think this game Jadong will be doing the same thing in fact Jadong doesn't have any gas mining so you know going for those quick three hatcheries uh, basically means Jadong says I want to play straight up macro I'm not getting any early gas I'm not gonna be cheesing or anything like that I'm gonna go straight macro and I'm gonna beat you you know the way that I uh, that I can beat you and I mean Jadon can beat you in any way possible so it doesn't doesn't really matter he can beat you in aggro he can beat you in macro he can do aggro macro <laughs> he can do everything so uh, yeah we'll see what happens here but one overlord is floating in here um, and it is going to get a decent scout into the main base overlords of course a little bit faster in heart of the swarm allowing Zerk to scout um, speaking of changes actually um, recently today or yesterday the Hellbat was uh, changed a uh, bit of a nerf. Infernal Pre-Igniter, though, does now apply to Hellbats, so that's kind of nice. And uh, Banshees have been gotten, given a little bit of a buff for their cloaking. Their cloaking field now costs half as much in terms of mineral and gas. Um, so a slight change. I didn't really feel like making a video about that, but I thought I'd mention it here for those of you guys who weren't aware. Um, anyways, we do have a probe that is making its way back home. And Stardust really only sniffed out this third hatchery. But from this point, seeing an early third like that, I think Stardust can really say, all right, I know you're going for a quick three hatcheries. Probably don't have any gas, um, early gas at least. Maybe he has gas coming up now, and he does. But probably doesn't have any early gas, so I don't have to worry about a roach all in. And Stardust can now go for that robotics facility that he likes so much. And it looks like he is going for that one gate straight to Robo. Um, and uh, this is the preliminary setup for Stardust if he wants to be aggressive and go for those gateways again. This is what he can do. Um, and usually what he does is he goes for that third base and then he attacks. So it's a little bit of an awkward timing. We'll see if he does it again. He is bringing in a Zealot and a Stalker right now. Um, and he is going to attack. 
Uh, not really much. I don't think he's going to be able to keep this... Oh, he keeps the Stalker alive, but he loses the Zealot. And uh, he's going to have to get that Stalker out of there. So too much Zerglings here on the ground. And Jadong is able to quickly deal with that without much of working out much of a sweat. Um, meanwhile, we do have the Robotics Facility finishing up here. Another a pylon coming up, somehow coming up in the middle, right in front of Jadong's front door. I have no idea how that happened, but apparently Stardust here is trying to feign Jadong out. He's basically trying to trick Jadong into thinking that a, uh, you know, a heavy gateway attack is coming, when in actuality it is not. Um, you know, he's just trying to trick Jadong, and Jadong now trying to make sure by sending this Overlord in, he wants to see what's going on. He will see that uh, there is a Twilight Council coming up here. And I think, you know, guys, I think the reason, I mean, this must be the reason why Stardust goes for such a quick Twilight Council in this build is he wants to rush the plus two weapons upgrades on the Forge. Um, and the only way to get a Twilight Council down, uh, the only way to get this upgrade going is by getting a Twilight Council out. The Robotics Facility just helps because you need an Observer and you need Immortals to deal with Roaches. But this whole build is designed around having plus two, plus one at a very early stage in the game. So early early in fact that zerg players cannot cope with it with just mere ground forces when they don't have as many upgrades and the thing here is jadong says forget all that i'm just gonna go for a freaking spire and i'm gonna get mutilus like i know how to go for muta's best and i'm gonna beat you down with mutilus now if he can get mutilus out on the skies he should be able to deal with the uh, ground troops that stardust comes out with and in fact jadong is attacking here with some roaches and zerglings it looks like he wants to take out this third next He's gonna kill off a bunch of ground troops on the Protoss side, and a great start here for Jadong, because if in fact Stardust was going for that awkward gateway attack, you know, he just lost about half of his army, and now he's gotta worry about saving this Nexus as well. Immortals and Sentries coming out here, looks like Stardust will be able to keep it alive just barely. That Nexus is going to go up. But more reinforcements are coming in from Jadong. He has more Zerglings coming. And the beauty behind this build is Jadong is saving up all of his gas. He's got almost 900 gas saved up. And once this ground attack ends, I mean, really, this is just a distraction so that he can get Mutalisks out. We are going to see about 10, 11, maybe 12 Mutalisks you know, flocking towards the skies momentarily. And Jadong is double expanding at the same time too, so Jadong is really setting himself up for a super sick macro game here. And honestly, if Stardust doesn't have appropriate anti-air out, um, you know, within the next couple of seconds, he could just straight up lose. Uh, 12 Mutalisks coming out at this early stage is a lot. Uh, to deal with and we also have flyer attacks level one coming as well now the one thing is stardust does have plus two weapons done he will need his gateways to start to pump out a lot of stalkers he has one two three four five six seven gateways right now plus robo he could certainly start to warp out a ton of stalkers what he doesn't realize though he, you know he thinks he's gonna go for this once again this heavy ground assault attack I'll buy it. it is delayed, but he is gonna go for this ground assault But what he doesn't realize is there are about 12 mutalisks that are flying on the bottom side of the map Making their way straight they're beelining straight for the Protoss main base and momentarily here um, You know Stardust is gonna have to figure out what he wants to do does he bring it? Well, he can't actually bring these forces back to defend because they cannot attack uh, Air units and in fact Jadong even bringing in some roaches and zergans to try to finish off this Nexus Although the Nexus is going to stay alive, but just barely. Meanwhile, the Mutalists fly right into the Protoss Natural, taking out all the probes. A ton of workers going down. 36 probes remain, and it looks like Stardust just says, All right, well, I can't save my, my main base, so I guess we are going to go for another base race, Jadong. And he's sending all of his ground troops in here. Now, if Jadong was, uh, was uh, ready to deal with this, I think he should throw up some spine crawlers in the main base in order to hold this off. But it looks like he's focused on destroying all these stalkers on the other side of the map. Although the problem is, these stalkers are 2-1 upgraded. They are very heavily upgraded. And the Mutas actually never got their plus one flyer attacks. It is still being researched back at the Spire, so these Mutas are having a pretty hard time dealing with heavily upgraded stalkers it looks like the pocket expansion hatchery has gone down zealots and, and sentries are inside the main base and this is just gonna go down to the wire ladies and gentlemen jadong has lost about you know double the resources that uh, the protoss player has lost in terms of units loss but jadong still has these mutas and zerglings outside the protoss front base as does stardust he's got all these immortals and sentries and zealots just ripping through the zerg infrastructure and jadong is not looking too good right now ladies and gentlemen he's only at 60 supply compared to 110 
and I think this might be GG for Jadong. Another hat tree going down. Stardust kills it off with his Immortals and Sentries. And the Spire has dropped as well. Ten Spine Crawlers being erected now, but I feel like Jadong should have thrown those Spine Crawlers up inside the main base. He should have thrown up right here at the ramp at the main base, and he would have actually been able to hold off this ground assault. And I'm not sure what took him so long to get the uh, spine collars up, and now he's going for, for them over here. He still actually has a chance here, ladies and gentlemen, because he has so many spine collars coming up at this base, and he's still got Mutas and Zerglings ripping through all the probes of the Protoss player. In fact, if he can get rid of all these probes, this would be a huge benefit for him. Meanwhile, the Immortals and Sentries coming into this grid of spine crawlers. I don't see how Stardust will be able to survive here. A couple of Mutas coming in as well. Jadon gonna try to uh, uh, fortify this hatchery with a few more reinforcing Mutalists. There is a hallucinated phoenix there, which might bother those mutas just a bit if they think they're a real phoenix. And uh, Jadon now trying to go for the Nexus. Meanwhile, are there any Nexus? There are no Nexi besides the one in the natural expansion. So if this Nexus goes down, it could just be GG for Stardust, in fact. Although Stardust does have, he only has 388 minerals. And he sent all of his probes to attack. He's using his probes to fight off drones right now, ladies and gentlemen. And it looks like Stardust has killed off all the spine crawlers somehow, some way, sending all of his immortals and sentries in. Now the Mito's coming back. There are only a few buildings left remaining for Jadong! Jadong could just lose this game due to elimination once again, but he gets an extractor up on the bottom side of the map, but I don't see how he's gonna keep this extractor alive. These probes are just going to kill off the extractor. Oh my god, Jadong was defeated! Stardust is victorious yet again! Game two, game three going to Stardust, and now it is two games to one. Stardust in the lead, Wow, what a sick game that was. We are going to go right into game four, ladies and gentlemen. And this is HD signing out.